At Boulder Planet, we live by a simple motto, nothing out of reach. In addition to their own brushes, they've also got a tripod that you can use so you can film your sends. <laughs> I saw this gym on a lot of friends' stories and I wanted to try it. I just thought it looked really cool. Semba Wang is pretty far from where I live, but it's fine, we got here. One of my friends is joining today. His name is Ben. He is not a climber. In fact, today is his first day climbing, which I'm so excited about. He is a dancer. His specialty is hip hop. He's sitting on a throne because a nigga made it. Let me see why I don't, so I had to take it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Regarding how I feel about my own climbing at the moment, it's a little bit up and down because I have had a finger injury. This finger injury I've had for a few months now. It is a minor AFL pulley tear, but it's just really, really annoying. I've definitely had a lot of advice on what to do about the finger. I had a physio session, I was given exercises to do with a resistance band, I was told to ice, I was told to rest and I was specifically told not to do any close grip exercises because that's what really aggravates this injury. My problem, I think, was that even when I was resting from climbing, I didn't stop doing pull-ups. I was adamant about pushing through pull-ups. I think that really set me back. I was paranoid about losing pull strength. And for me, if I don't do pull-ups, like every couple days at least, I just lose that strength. I just can't do pull-ups anymore. I just don't really retain it very well. So I had to stop doing pull-ups for a while and I think that really helped accelerate the recovery process. It's not 100% but it's definitely way better than it was a month ago, a month and a half ago. I also had a lot of advice from friends of mine so I reached out to a lot of friends who've dealt with finger injuries. My friend Molly said that she relies on dead hangs to sort out any of her finger niggles. So I bought a portable hangboard so I could start doing dead hangs as well. I spoke to Holsog and he said that he relies on rice, the rice method, where you basically just have a bucket of rice, you stick your hands in it and you do hand motions against the resistance of the rice and that sorts out his finger issues. But I don't know how much I trust that because Holsog appears to have a permanent finger injury at all times. Holsog, do you ever really recover or do you just exist in a constant state of finger injury question from me. <laughs> I am really looking forward to Ben getting here and climbing with him. I love taking people who've never climbed before climbing. It's just so nice to see it again from the perspective of a complete beginner. And I think I really need that right now because it's been so easy for me having various injuries, but this one being the predominant one, to get caught up in comparing myself to how I was before at my strongest and healthiest. That doesn't account for the fact that we're constantly in flux. As people, we're constantly in change, our bodies are changing, we get injured, we recover, we get stronger, something else happens. I'm looking forward to a really fun, easy session and finding out what Ball of Planet is all about. Ben is here! Hello! All the fun part. Typically with climbing shoes you size down a little bit because you want them to be tight but not so tight that they're like cripplingly painful. So maybe try going down one size. Woo! <laughs> ben, are you excited for your first time climbing? Yeah, really excited because uh, I've never done this thing before. I am definitely not down there. I think I'm going to be like around the middle section. I want to take it a little bit easier on my finger. Um, and then yeah, this is just a wild card, so it could be any problem, any sorry, any difficulty. Nice, dude. Alright, so okay, one more, right? Yeah, exactly. You're already doing something that's really good. You're looking down at your feet a lot. A lot of the time, people end up just pulling with their upper bodies, but good footwork is really, really helpful. Similar to that, it's like. You try to think of what's the best choreography. In this context, it's like you're trying to think of what's the best movement strategy. Exactly. Yes. We've gone through kind of body positioning, keeping your arms outstretched, not trying to waste too much energy by clinging super close to the wall, keeping your hips close to the wall, um, how to stand on holds so that you're not standing on holds in a weird way and popping off. So I think 
I think it's good. I think we're getting somewhere. <laughs> yeah, let's go, cool, let's go. Cool. Let's go. Normally in climbing, when you feel stuck, the first thing I think is, can I do anything with my feet? Can I get my, how do I get my feet higher? And just pop your right foot off, pop your left foot on, exactly, and then you can step forward. Nice. Nice. I'm gonna take a rest here. <laughs> Um, I managed to do that. Yeah, dude, that was nice. Wait, what you, that? Uh, change. Switch, switch feet, switch, switch feet. feet. Okay. Yeah. Can you stand up on your right foot? It just feels scarier because you're on like a small surface. Yes. Right. Come on, dude, you got this. And if you don't, if you don't want to do it, you can always come down. I have to try. It. Yeah, exactly. I love that. You can stand up. Yes, dude. Nice. Nice. Nice, dude. Match hands. Nice. You did it! Let's freaking go! Let's freaking go! Where's my energy? I'm gonna start doing some fives now, see how I get on. That's kind of still. What's the scale? It's 1 to 12. So 5 is just below the middle. And I will start with this blue 5 over here. Right. Yeah. And there is another five right next to it that I can try. Look at the shape of these holes. They look like frisbees. The mic. Nice. <laughs> yeah, those were good, dude. I'm feeling good about five. I feel like I can go to six. And we'll just see what my finger says. <laughs> also, whenever I demonstrate my finger injury, it looks like I'm cussing people. <laughs> Etiquette. I think I'm happy staying um, in the sixes today, just right in the middle of the scale. Again, if I really feel like it, maybe I will try and push myself a bit harder, but right now my finger doesn't hurt at all, which is like, that hasn't happened for me in a while, so I really don't want to lose it. I think my finger is happy at this level, and we'll just see 
what we can do. Nice. Oh, look. Look how useless that just became. I have the tape here to oh, no. um, put on a flapper here, but it's just been pushed up. So I may as well take it off. I think if I were to straighten this, yes. there's a lot of stress on my hands and I don't have enough grip. Because if I have a lot of strength, I don't mind like holding it. Yeah. But I know I'm going to slip. So uh, most of the time, I would just... Yeah, yeah, hit. yeah. Right. Right foot, left foot. Cross over. Can you see like how I use my hips? I sort of use my knees to swing my hips around. Yeah. Like from here, if I were to just try and pull to there, mm. it would take so much more energy. Yeah. But if I can close my hips, I'm just already long enough nice. to reach it. Let me try that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice, dude. So much smoother than the first time. Nice. Close, dude. One more later. You can, you for sure. Hello. My name is Sophia, and this is a problem that I'm really struggling with. I feel like a lot of climbing at the moment, at least like on Instagram, we just post the stuff that we send, the stuff that we do well at, and it kind of seems like if that's your first impression of climbing, like your first impression of climbing is through the visual culture of the online world, you kind of get the impression that it is a really easy thing and everyone just sends the first time around. But climbing is about failing, and you'll fail and fail and fail and fail until you send the project you really care about. And that's what the fun of it as well. Like imagine if you could just send everything right the first time. There'd be no challenge. There'd be no problem solving. And that's the fun. The fun is solving the problem. So here is a problem that I'm struggling with, and we can try and solve it. to be careful that I don't get too sucked into being hard on myself for not climbing at a certain level, comparing myself to other people or comparing myself to even past versions of myself that have been stronger. For me the whole reason why I started climbing is because I wanted to be close to nature. For me it's like mental health, spiritual fulfillment, making friends, having fun and using it as a method of exploring the world. For me it's another tool in my toolkit to excavate, to learn, to see different people, different cultures learn more about my inner world, to experience the outer world. If you're climbing V1, I'm climbing V6, I don't think that I'm any more of a real or valuable or better climber. I don't think that my experience of climbing is more true. I just think it's different. And same for my friends who climb like V10 and over. I don't think they're 
more valuable members of the climate community. There's enough room for all of us to enjoy the sport in the way that makes sense for each of us and for us to all respect that. We need those people at the frontiers of the sport who are pushing it to the next level, doing things we never thought were possible. But then there's also aspects of climbing which would be a real shame for people to miss out on, like this mental health, like finding yeah. community and friendship, having fun, learning, like there's just, just so many more aspects to climbing and there is room for all of that. That was such a long answer to your question. Great, great. I think bouldering in Singapore is uh, slowly picking up. Yeah. I think there's a lot more bouldering centers in Singapore and um, even some of my friends, they are dancers, they are also picking up bouldering. But do you not find a parallel for dancing? Because you're a dancer. Something that I've heard you say is we all dance, we all can dance, we all like feel we a rhythm can. and get swept up in a rhythm. It's, it's not like just because you're this really experienced hip-hop dancer, yeah. you don't feel like you're better than anyone else who just wants to move, right? Yeah. And yeah. you see those little kids running around and bouncing to music and just enjoying <laughs> music, you get reminded of like dance being yeah. fun. I feel so... the same way about climbing because, you know, like this kind of self-consciousness and kind of like performance anxiety you, you sometimes get children don't have and so for me it's like when you look at the way a kid just throws themselves at something and there's no inhibitions there's no self-consciousness you just try it for fun if it doesn't work you do something else like i try and adopt that attitude towards climbing like try not to take it so seriously because it's not that serious nothing nothing was ever really that serious about climbing up a piece of rock like why are you doing that what does that do for anyone i don't know like i think it's just fundamentally fun it's just fun keep the childlike attitude people yeah and thank you for climbing with me, you did so well. Thank you for uh, uh, bringing me to this space. <laughs> Alright. Bye. Bye. <laughs>